Hi there everyone, I'm Vicki Howell and this is Ask Me Monday. I am so happy to be here starting our weeks out creatively together. I am here uh, right at you, not with words that come out of my mouth, but I am here with you from my studio in Austin, Texas. I would love to know where you're watching from and I'd like to give a special shout out to my international viewers. I've been noticing uh, quite a few from Australia lately, Canada, the UK, Brazil, Turkey, so happy to have you here. Um, I just love that the internet connects us on a global level. So I would love to hear where you're watching from and also, as we always do, how you were creative over the weekend, how you filled that creative well. And it doesn't have to be any major project, just anything. And if you've got something to share, a recipe, a pattern, a tutorial, a beautiful piece of art, please post it in the comment section. The comment section are your community cork boards and uh, I encourage you to connect with each other. If you're in the same neighborhood, meet for a little craft-a-thon or coffee or whatever. Um, that's what we're here for, right? So hello, Chris. So nice to see you as always watching from Sacramento, California. Um, why was, um, I was creative. I was super crafty over the weekend, but really more Friday than anything else. I, um, I made this top I'm wearing. It's the Hosta Top from Fancy Tiger Crafts, which I've made 11 D of, but I'm kind of obsessed with this version because this cotton, this quilted cotton situation right here is from Merchant and Mills, this company, this gorgeous company out of the UK. And it was like, you could not get your hands on it. It was like this fabric that everybody wanted it, wanted it and I got it. And I made a long sleeve, well, I actually cut it to uh, kind of like three quarter sleeve quilted coat and I had just enough to squeeze out the body of a hosta and then it was sort of serendipitous because I didn't have enough to do the waistband um, and the cuffs and everything but I love the stripes I always love black and white stripes and then upon reflection I really did need need something knit to go over my head you know and um, so the woven wouldn't have worked anyway so I finished that um, and I also um, finished some of you know that I have been working on a Asymmetrical scarf for Kathy Valentine, who was the bassist from the Go-Go's, and she has a new memoir coming out this month, and um, originally it was in part for her to wear to South by Southwest. Um, she had an event there. I had two events there. As most of you may have heard, it's been canceled um, due to health concerns, So, uh, but she will be wearing it in her book trailer. So I finally finished that. It's right here. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's kind of the boomerang shape. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you saw why I chose the stitches and the colors I did. They all sort of tell, they signify a part of her story. And I'm hoping to have also be able to offer the pattern and maybe the kit with the colors as well. Um, these are her, her colors that she chose. And I think they're just beautiful. They're in Madeline Tosh, Merino Light. So I'm hoping to be able to get that together um, sooner rather than later. But please just follow me at Vicki Hell on Instagram for ups, updates on that. And probably on Facebook too, let's be honest. Um, I usually do both. So if you are waiting, if you are only here for the tutorial, please just fast forward if you're watching the replay to when you see my hands. Um, it looks like we've got Debbie here. We've got Terry. Um, We've got uh, people from, it's scrolling slowly, so all over the nation. Um, I, I love starting my week um, here with you, and I'm able to do that thanks to the support of Knitter's Pride. But they're Knit Pro if you're out of North America. They're a really great knitting and crochet tools company. They do a lot of work in India for women's education and employment, and they're very supportive of designers here in the States. Europe and beyond. So, um, hello Wanda, hello Annette, hello um, Alexis, so nice to see all of you. Please, um, I know it's a little, oh, and also, if you know anybody that would be interested in Ask Me Monday in general or today's tutorial, which I realize I haven't told you yet, but is in the subject line, please forward this um, repost. Facebook once again <laughs> has changed their algorithm and now they've, they've the engineers have disabled the ability to boost live video posts, which doesn't really matter to you guys probably, but for me that, that affects, that means that maybe half or maybe only a third of people will see this come up in their feed that normally would, um, just because of the way, the way that it works. So I would really appreciate if you would let your knitting groups, your crochet groups, your crafty friends know um, that this little show exists. Oh, Tola from Finland, so good to see you. I love when you, when you drop in. All right, so you know um, I, 
love quick projects in general, but I'm always interested in gifts. Um, obviously, you know, for the holidays, we're all gift bound, but just in general, like as a mother, I need teacher gifts all the time. As a friend, <laughs> I have, um, you know, little events, dinners that I go to that I'd like to have a host gift, you know, as a daughter, there are sometimes I just want to give a little pick me up to my own mom, whatever it is, you know, we all have our things. And so, but we have chosen well, one of the crafts, two of the crafts we've chosen, knitting and crochet can take a little bit longer time. So as much as we'd love to be able to give a big, beautiful, you know, asymmetrical wrap sh shawl to everyone, A, it might not be everybody's taste, but B, it's just not that realistic for everyone's life space. So like I said, I'm always looking for great gifts. And what one of the things that I really love are handmade washcloths, especially if you pair them with a handmade soap that either you make yourself or you can get some great ones at your local um, green grocer or, um, you know, uh, craft market or even on Etsy or wherever. If you pair that with one or two or three washcloths tied in a little piece of, you know, ribbon or, you know, upcycled material of some form, it's just, it's beautiful, it's classic, and um, it's just a lovely gift to give. And so, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you four different stitch patterns that really make for great washcloths. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the washcloths more at the end, but what I look for when I'm designing a washcloth, well, first of all, washcloths are a great way to, pla to practice knitting and crochet. They're great for stitch samplers. So you can kind of plug in anything. But what I personally look for when I'm, you know, designing a washcloth or making one is a couple of things. One, I really like textured stitches, and so um, I'll be showing you a few of those. This is a stripes pattern, but you can see the texture here in this double moss stitch. That's really great for exfoliating. If you've got something that has little bumps on it, it's really gonna you know, feel nice against the skin along with your lovely soap and also exfoliates. I also look for drape. It's really nice, especially, now I'm not talking dishcloths. Um, I mean, you can absolutely use these stitches for dishcloths, but you know, you're probably gonna use a little bit less expensive um, materials. You're not gonna, you're gonna you know, not worry about the care for it or anything. These, what I'm really focused on right now are these just lovely host gifts. And I want a drape that goes with the hand of the, of the yarn I'm using. So this is Blue Sky Fibers Printed Organic Cotton. It's really beautiful. And again, I'll show you more at the end of it. But I like drape. And why I care about drape when, you know, we're not wearing them? Because wouldn't you rather have this against your skin than if it was something that was stiff, you know? So that can be anything from you know, an open weave stitch to just going up a hook or a needle size just so there's a little flow, if you know what I mean. Okay, so drape, stitch, um, and then for me, and this really doesn't have much to do with washcloths, but what I always like is I like a little bit of interest. I don't love projects that just use one stitch all the way through um, when when they're, you know, just squares like this. If they're shaping and stuff, that's, that's a whole different ball game. So I like just to keep a little interest. Not a crazy amount that I can't, you know, whip it out and watch my daughter's lacrosse game while while I'm working on it, but enough that I'm not like, ugh, snoozeville, another, you know, another quick gift. So um, that's sort of the other thing that I look in, like really easy uh, pattern repeats or maybe stripes of different textures. So what I'm going to focus on today are two for the knitters and two for the crocheters. I know I've been alternating every week a lot lately, but uh, this time I thought I would, uh, I'd have both of my crafters uh, in the same episode. So I'm going to flip the camera around. Y'all know that this is never a pretty process, so I'm gonna flip it around and I'm going to get started. I will be using mostly, um, for knitting needles, I'm going to be using the new Smart Sticks from Knitter's Pride. They were designed by Laura Zander and manufactured by Knitter's Pride. They are, I'm gonna be using circulars and DPNs. Straights are fine, I just prefer to not work with straights. I like uh, the cords take some of the pressure off of um, my wrists. And um, when I'm just using little, doing little small swatches, sometimes I'll use DPNs just because they're shorter. So, uh, but these needles are really cool because they are marked off in inch increments so that you can use them as rulers as well. Um, so I'll be using those and then I will be using a Knitter's Pride Waves crochet hook. I like it because it's flat, so it's easy to do whatever this is, <laughs> to, to rotate, um, and I'm really into the whole black and gold situation right now. Okay, let me flip around, 
and um, we'll go from there. All right, I'm using a, oh, that was not pretty. So I'm using a different tripod, tripod right now. And as you can see, I did not rehearse this before. <laughs> All right, so let me adjust the lights a little, bring a little more light. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is the one that I was talking about a second ago. I'm gonna bring this up. So this is a striped version, stockinette stripes, but the other stripe, the textured stripe, is called double moss stitch. Moss stitch is like seed stitch, except instead of every row alternating, you are going to row alternate every two rows. But I am shaking it up because I've actually made this in double moss, moss stitch. So instead of going knit pearl, knit pearl, we're going to do, you know what, I'm just gonna show you. All right, so. I've cast on a multiple of four stitches, and I have written out these stitch patterns at vickihell.com, so go ahead and check those out if you wanna swatch along. And I've got my Namaste bag that I dig because I can put my little ball of yarn, my, my yarn winder broke, and so all my balls are like hand uh, rolled right now, and so they roll off the table. So I love this bag because I can pull it through without it flying everywhere because of the snap. Okay, so on the first row, all you're going to do is knit two, purl two. And I'll have more information on that Namaste bag at the end as well. Okay, so you're going to just lather, rinse, repeat, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit two, purl two, all the way across. Okay, so you'll just continue to do that. And what, what you will get is a piece that looks like this. And from here, you're going to, because we've worked in the multiples of four, it'll work out so that you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Now, if we were working seed stitch, which is sort of the sister stitch to moss stitch, we would do the opposite, but we are not. We are working in, we are working in moss stitch. So we want to repeat the exact thing. Oops, excuse me. So what that requires is, well, A, reading the pattern, which you can find at vickihell.com, but you can always just read the stitches. So we can see that these are knit, but it might be easier for you to see that these are pearl. You always know pearls because they've got a little turtleneck around. So we wanna just do whatever the stitch is again. So on the wrong side, you're going to repeat exactly what you did on the right side. Oh, Janet just said that she's knitting one washcloth a week for the year. I love projects like that. Okay, so you're just going to do that all the way to the end. Knit two, purl two, all the way to the end. So we've done that for our rows one and two. Okay, so then we are on our row three. So here is the right side. Odd rows are the right side for this particular. Get this out of the way. And now we are ready to create the second half of the moss stitch. So now at this point, we want to do the opposite of what we did for the last two rows. So for rows three and four, all you'll do is if the stitch is knit, you're going to do the opposite, you'll purl. So that makes it purl two, purl two, knit two, all the way across. And you can see what that does is that creates these little blocks of stitch. And you'll just continue, or excuse me, a pattern. And you'll just continue that all the way around. Um, and you could do the entire washcloth with that stitch pattern, or as I've done in this pattern, I've done it with stripes of stockinette. And it just add these, adds these really beautiful textural bumps and it's really enhanced by the fact that this particular yarn is printed, um, block printed on top of it, so beautiful. Okay, so that is knit pattern number one. Let's move to knit pattern number two, which is lacy columns. Here is an example of that. 
I really like this one. Um, the Just the nature of the lace and the garter bumps give you that exfoliation as I was talking about. But the drape on this is just really beautiful. Um, and I just think that it would be lovely lathered up in your favorite soap. So for this one, you are going to also work in multiples of four. And again, I've written this out. These are the lace columns. I've written this out at vickihowell.com. And so for the first row, you want to knit one. Purl three. I do not like that you're having to look at so much stuff in your frame. I apologize for that. Let's see, that was two. Knit one. Purl three. And you're going to do that all the way across on the right side. And then on the wrong side, you're just going to purl all the way back. So that's easy. That's pretty self-explanatory. I can show you if you want, but I think you get the gist. So you're just going to flip it around. I won't show you the whole thing, but. And what that does is create sort of the stockinette portion of the lace which you can see in the columns right here. Okay, so I've knit one, purled three all the way across, flip it over, and these are the um, Smart Sticks circulars. They actually have, you can't really see on camera, but they've got dots all the way down the cords as well so that the entire needle acts as a measuring tape as well. All right, and then on the way back, all you would do is you flip it over and you purl. And when I said that it's going to create the stockinette columns, what that means is only the stitches that were knit will create that stockinette. Okay, so you purl all the way across. You're just going to repeat that for a couple times as is written out at vickihell.com. The, the lacy part or the sort of, um, yeah, the lacy row happens after you've done a couple of repeats. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay. Okay, we are going to knit one, excuse me, I have to get to the right space, I apologize. Oops, knit one, which I just did. Then we yarn over, Slip to knitwise. I need to back up. I have done the wrong thing. I was in the wrong place. Okay, again, knit one. Slip two. Knit one. Pass both of those two stitches over. I'm going to repeat because I just realized that take three live video, you want to slip the stitches that are the column and the one right before. So I was just not set up properly. Again, I apologize. So I want to, I'm gonna do this again. Let's just all pretend I'm starting over. <laughs> Knit one, yarn over, slip two. Knit the next one. And then you pass those two stitches and you can do it either one at a time or two at a time over. And that creates that cool column. I'm gonna do that again because of the hot mess that I made that first time. Also hot mess that I decided to wear big rings and they're getting caught in my yarn, but I digress. All right, so you are going to knit one. Move this a little bit closer this time. Yarn over. Slip two, there's one, two, we're slipping knitwise. Knit the next one, and then slip both of those stitches and let them drop off. I wanna show you a third time just to make sure you got it since it wasn't clear at the beginning. Knit one, yarn over, slip two, knit one, pass over. 
the yarn over. So you're increasing and decreasing, but what it's doing is it's creating these really lovely open spaces, but also the columns. It almost looks like kind of climbing flowers. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so that does it for the two knit stitches that we're gonna focus on today. Now let's talk crochet. I really like a basket weave for this type of project because of the texture. So to create that, we are going to, let me get situated here. We're gonna start with a chain. And again, I've written out the instructions at vickihowell.com. Scoot this down a little bit. Okay, so we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So I just wanna, just as a refresh, this does not count, the loop on the hook does not count. Here is our first one. Here is our second one. So let's single crochet, and the, this is American terms, it would be double crochet if you're in the UK. Yarn over, pull through, you've got two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Then from here, you single crochet in every chain across. And actually, the one that we're focused on right now is not, in fact, that one. We are going to be doing the bobble, the subtle bottle bobbles. I really like this because you have to look really close, but you've got these little, have you seen those soaps that have the bumps on the bottom that massage? It reminds me of that. So for this one, we are going to single crochet all the way across for the first row to the very end. Okay, then what we want to do is double crochet. I've worked most of the double crochet across, but I'll just do this. I'll do the very end of this. Actually, excuse me, this is single crochet. So we single crochet All right, so we've done a single crochet row and then I've alternated with double crochets. I'm about to show you what double crochet looks like, but I'm going to do that on the exact same row that I'm going to show you the bobbles, just a little more efficient that way. So the first row, as I said, was single crochet, double crochet, and then you lather, rinse, repeat against the, again, the directions are at vickihowell.com. Then we turn around. So this row, you can kind of see, I'm gonna bring it up close is made up of double crochets and bobbles. And I'll tell you how, I'll tell you where to get the patterns for my exact washcloths at the end of this as well. Okay, so we are moving on to a bobble stitch. So to, for this particular row, we are going to chain three, and generally double crochets, the chain three counts as a double crochet. When you're chaining, doing a turning chain for single crochet and it's only one, it doesn't always. It really depends on if you're working with a lightweight or a heavy weight wool, or excuse me, yarn. But almost always the chains count as a double crochet when you're working um, with them. So then we are going to double crochet. So I'm just gonna do a refresher. And again, these are UK terms, or excuse me, US terms. UK would be um, treble. So we yarn over, we insert, in the next stitch, so we're going underneath both loops of the stitch, you pull through a loop, that gets you anchored and over to the position you need to be on. You will have three loops on. You wanna yarn over and pull through two loops twice. And that's why we call it double here. All right, and then you're going to do that again. And now we're to the point where we want to do a bobble. Now there's different ways to do bobble stitches, but this is the way that I've done them to keep them really simple and not overly bulky. So we'll yarn over, insert in the next stitch. 
Everything that I do now for this bobble will all be worked in the same stitch. We're going to pull a loop through. And then we yarn over and pull through two loops. All right, we're going to do that same thing three more times. So yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and then one last time, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Now you will be loaded up with loops. This is also just like a um, double crochet together of several stitches of four stitches. It's the same, same idea. Well, except for we're doing it all in one stitch instead of over the course of four stitches. So now we yarn over and we pull through and that creates our bobble. That creates the bunch. Isn't that so pretty? I'm going to show it to you one more time. Let me get over to the next space. We separate them with double crochets. And now we're at our bobble. We're going to yarn over, insert our hook, pull through. So we're doing a part of a double crochet each time. So for a total of four times, we're yarning over, pull through one, pull through two. That was three, I believe. And then on the last time, we end by pulling, yarning over and pulling through all. And that is how you do the bobbles for this really subtle bobble stripe. I just think that looks really cool. This particular yarn um, color has looks like newsprint because of the black on the cream, and I just think it's really beautiful. All right, so now I mentioned before the weave, or the basket weave. So let me show you how that is created. All right, the first row is double crochet. I'm not going to show you how to do that since I just did it again, but and you can get the multiples that you work in. Well, it's four. I'll tell you that right now, um, but on VickiHowell.com. So you know how many, um, and I'll also tell you how many to chain to allow for the double crochet. All right, so from here, we are going to be working with a, in a multiple of four, as I said. What I've started for my swatch in general is I have chained three and counted that as a double crochet. And then I just worked a regular double crochet. That is a style choice just when I'm working this stitch pattern, just so I have sort of a frame. But you could start the pattern right there. It's kind of up to you. All right, so now we're going to work two front post double crochets. To, so to do that, we yarn over, we go around, I'm gonna bring this up. I feel like I'm too far. Around the post, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through one, Yarn over, pull through the next. Let's do that again. Yarn over, going from front to back, we go around the post, yarn over, make sure you can see that. Pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. All right, now we need to go, we're gonna work two back post half double, or excuse me, double crochets. So we yarn over, and we're gonna come around the back and insert around the post and then work that double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over, come in through the back, around the post, and work that double crochet. And you're just going to repeat that all the way to the, to the end. If you're doing the bookend of traditional or just regular double crochets, then you'll end with that. That, again, is a style choice. And this is my right side that I'm working on. Okay, so you do that all the way to the end. And you will get a little something that looks like this. So now what we need to do is we need to create the basket weave, the checkered pattern that we see here. So to do that, I'm going to work my bookended double crochets as I have chosen to do. But now what we want to do is work the opposite that we're seeing. So we can see that these are presenting forward, which means that they are front posts, or they, they're presenting as front posts. So that means I want to do the opposite. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to work my back post. So on the wrong side rows, you're going to do the opposite of what you see. Well, actually on every row from here on, you're gonna do the opposite of what you see. 
This is very much the, the same idea as the double moss stitch, except for it's not every two rows, it's every one row, but really why that is is because the stitches are such different heights. Double crochets are much taller than a knit stitch would be. So you don't need as many rows to create that same look. And that's all you do. And you just repeat those two rows for as long as you want your washcloth to be. And your result will be a little something like this. And that's so pretty. And can you imagine it, you know, folded up, maybe a little piece of, you know, pretty ribbon around it, a little bit of soap. I don't have scissors, so we'll just pretend. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, so pretty and cute, and I just think they're just a great idea for kind of soothing your hands, soothing your soul, all good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna flip around again, and I have not done it with this tripod, so here's nothing. <laughs> all right. All right, so that's it for today. So I saw that some of you were, well, it's not quite it for today. That's it for the tutorial portion. I saw that some of you were asking about the actual patterns for the washcloths. Oh, behold, I have an answer for you. So if you are interested in the bobble washcloth, in the moss stitch stripe washcloth, in the lacy columns, in the now wrapped up basket weave. Oh, but wait, there's two more. More crochet, the V stitch with the little Pico edging, which is super sweet, or the asymmetrical off-center lacy cable columns. You get all six of these patterns in this month's Yarnier subscription box. We have, we still have some left. This one's, this one's, people are loving this one, so it's there, it's flying off the shelves a little bit easier. But you get all six patterns for that in a really pretty little booklet. And you can find that through vickihowell.com and just click on the Yarnier shop, or you can go directly to yarnier.com. You do you. Um, you get a booklet, you get the digital version as well, but then you also get one of these gorgeous colors, a full hank, one of these gorgeous colors of blue sky organic cotton printed. That's got the coolest thing. They've actually, they actually, you know, block printed flats and then created the speckles so beautiful so at random you get one of those you get one of the namaste bags that i've been working with it'll either this color or this color again it'll be a surprise it also comes with a tiny little dotted book so you can work on your own patterns as well my hair is a fright right now and you get a blue sky alpaca card for a free pattern any of their patterns up to nine dollar value it, even a sweater, whatever. And then sometimes when you work with cotton, even when it's delight, actually, you know what, just in general, hands get really dry. And I don't know about you, but I get dry cuticles that can snag yarn. So you also get a Love and Leche Anywhere Balm. You can use it for cuticles, you can use it for lips, you can use it for whatever. Delightful. All of these are woman-run businesses. Um, there's four all together that you get. This smells so good. This one is lemongrass, but we have a few different fragrances that you get at random and you can get that right now so if you would like those patterns please just nab the march box you just click subscribe march and you can cancel at any time after that for the rest of you if you're like mm, eh, not my thing but you would like to practice the stitches for free just go to vickihowell.com and i've written out the stitch the stitch patterns you can do your math just check your gauge figure out how big you want your washcloth and just multiply the stitch pattern by that and you can design your own. All right, loves, thank you so much for being here. I, um, so I had planned on being off next week because of South By, because I was doing my events, and now I'm, now I'm a little unsure. I'm probably off next week because it's still my kids, <laughs> uh, my kids' uh, spring break, so I will be back the next Monday. I don't know, maybe something crazy will change and I'll be inspired and I might be right back in your feed. But for now, I really appreciate spending the time with you. Thank you so much to those of you that subscribe to this, that subscribe to Yarnier, that subscribe to all of my projects that help me get to preach the crafty gospel for a living. I feel so grateful to have you in my community. All right, have a great week. Please take a little time to be creative. See you soon. Bye.